What's going on guys? Welcome into the shop. It's a windy, miserable day outside, so it's a good day to get back on this project. I need to get this done. So if this is your first time watching the channel, first of all, thanks for watching. And secondly, let me give you a little background on this project. So I ran this shoot for a good 10 years, and the whole time that I ran it, there were a bunch of little problems that I just kind of dealt with because I didn't have anything else to use. So fast forward a few years, I got another shoot in a trade. Just, I wasn't shopping for a new shoot, but one kind of came along that was too good to pass up. So I grabbed it. So now <clears throat> I've got the old shoot here in the shop and I'm trying to go through and fix all the little problems that I never liked about it. And then I will sell it and I'm going to use that money to do another upgrade to the corral. Now, unfortunately, this is a project that I started before I had a YouTube channel. So I've already got a lot of the big stuff done but there's still some stuff that I think is worth looking at and I'm gonna walk you through and show you all the stuff that I've done already. So the first thing is this lever for the head gate. Here's the old one and you can see that this hole that the bolt was gone through got all wallowed out so this lever would shake back and forth really bad and uh, I just didn't like that. It was too loose and sometimes when you would go to trigger the head gate this lever would get caught on something and then you'd miss the cow so we've got an all-new handle i mean the whole thing is new <clears throat> and then here where the pin goes through i welded a little pipe in there so it moves a little bit but nothing like it did before while we were at it went ahead and replaced this linkage piece here with the thicker piece because those are known to bend and get messed up. So the other thing I replaced was this ratchet piece here because the old one was getting a little, you know, the, the teeth were kind of getting worn out. So I figured while I was at it, may as well replace that. I call this a saw blade ratchet. I don't really know what the right name for it is, but you can kind of see why I call it that. But let me show you how it works. Head gate open, so it can catch on any one of these teeth, just depending on where you want it. So another thing I had to fix on this shoot was the handle for the body squeeze. Now you see how I have to reach up to grab it? Well before, the way the handle was set up, it was like right here at face level, and I cannot tell you how many times I walked into that thing. I mean, you know it's there, but you still walk into it. So now I got it up here. I guess if you're a tall guy, you can still hit your head on it, but for a short guy like me, it's perfect. So while we were repositioning this handle, we went ahead and just made a heavier duty um, lever here and just made it out, all out of tube and everything should be good to go now. So speaking of levers being in the way, the lever for the butt gate was probably the worst. Right now I've got it off because I just rebuilt this whole system because it was just, there was just nothing worth saving there. So we just went ahead and rebuilt it. But what I'm gonna do here, this is where the lever attaches. Now, I need to figure out a way to make it so that when the butt gate is closed, this lever is up above my head. And when the butt gate is open, the lever is all the way down, but doesn't interfere with the body squeeze. So that's something that we have to do today. Haven't done that yet. So in addition to welding the lever on for the butt gate, we need to go ahead and finish welding up um, everywhere where I have clamps. Um, I just, <clears throat> the reason I haven't welded that yet was because I wanted to make sure that everything in the linkage worked before I went ahead and welded it on there. So this is definitely not a project that's going to be finished today, but we can do a few little more things on this and just keep moving towards that end goal of getting it done and getting it sold. So the first thing to do, the easiest thing to get done is to weld up these pieces for the body squeeze. But before I do that, I just want to test it one more time just to make sure that everything's working good. Okay, so I've got one little clearance issue, but it's not a big deal. Um, I can still go ahead and weld these pieces on.
All right, so we got those pieces welded on. Everything looks good. Um, oh, actually, I forgot. I forgot something. <laughs> right there. I need to weld these guys still. Okay, that would have been a, that would have been a bad thing to forget. <laughs> So after we get those pieces welded on that I forgot about, we'll go ahead and take care of this clearance issue. So let me show you what that is. Now I've got it marked already right here, the, where what needs to be cut off. When you close the body screws, right there, those two pieces hit. I know it's kind of dark, but. So if we just take a grinder or a Sawzall and cut this off, we should be good to go. First things first, let me get these pieces welded up. You know, that's kind of the problem when you start a project and you wait so long to finish it is you forget these little odds and ends that you need to wrap up, which I'm sure when I tack those pieces in place, I was like, yeah, I'll remember to weld these. Here we are. So the more that I'm looking at this and trying to figure out how to get a grinder in there or a sawzall, the more I just start thinking, you know, I have a plasma cutter, so I'm just going to use that. Okay, yeah, that was like a hundred times easier than trying to do that with the grinder. So let's see how it works. Perfect. So everything for the body squeeze, I think is pretty much good to go now. Um, so let's move on to the handle for the butt gate. But before we do that, let me show you some of the tools that I'm using. So today I'm using my Lincoln Power MIG 216 and the Hypertherm Power Max 30. Now the Power Max 30, they don't make anymore. They make a similar version, but they do not make this one anymore. It's the smallest plasma cutter that Hypertherm makes. And at the time that I bought it, Hypertherm was pretty much the only company to consider when buying a plasma cutter, but things thankfully have changed now. Um, there's a lot of other companies that make good plasma cutters, but at the time, this was the best that I could afford. So, and it's actually served me pretty well. Um, you can't cut really thick stuff with it, but you know, stuff like we did here, quarter inch, goes right through it. But guys, I'm definitely not trying to discourage you if you don't have tools like this. I mean, I'm kind of a freak. I started buying tools when I was 16 and I have, haven't stopped even today. And I'm not sure I'll ever stop. Um, but let me show you what I did start with. This is my first welder here. I don't even think they make this anymore. I mean, they make something similar to it. But I have run probably miles of wire through that thing just on all sorts of little projects. That's pretty affordable. You can pick those up around, I want to say 600 bucks, which, you know, for a, a MIG welder that does inner shield also is actually pretty good. If you have that and a grinder and a torch or a plasma cutter, you can do so much. So just because you don't have all the biggest, most expensive tools, don't let that stop you from tackling projects like this. Somebody's feeling neglected here. What's the matter, huh? All right, so the body squeeze is good to go. Let's go ahead and move on to putting the handle on for the butt gate. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is figure out how long we want this handle to be. So we know it's gonna hook in right here. We want some decent leverage. So I'm gonna say about right there, 32 inches ought to be just about right. So I went to cut this piece of tube and I realized that I still have my miter saw at the ranch for a project that I was doing down there. But for just one quick cut here, I can easily use a porta band or a grinder, so not a big deal. All right, so we got our piece cut out here. Now we've got to notch this tube because we're gonna weld this end to another piece of round tube, and in order to make this fit up nice, we gotta notch it. Now, there are a lot of different ways that you can notch tube. You can do it with a grinder, you can do it with a tubing notcher, you can do it with a torch even, I've seen that. Not the prettiest results, but it does work. 
I use a Harbor Freight tubing notcher and it actually works really well. Let me show you how to use it. So we're using an inch and a quarter tubing. So the first thing I need to do is dig through my box of hole saws and stuff and find an inch and a quarter hole saw. I know you're thinking I found that so fast. Trust me, I didn't find it before I started filming. So this is the Harbor Freight tubing notcher. It's really a pretty simple little piece of equipment, but it actually works really well. So the first thing we gotta do is take our inch and a quarter hole saw and thread it onto the arbor here. Once the hole saw is in place, we just take our piece of tube and put it in the clamp. So if you don't already know how a tubing notcher works, I think the concept is probably pretty clear right now. So all we have to do is attach our drill to the arbor, and drill the hole saw right through the tube and we'll have a perfect notch. Okay, we are rigged up and ready to go. And remember something like this, oil is your friend. Okay, so there we have our mostly close enough to perfect notch. Uh, we just need to clean this up with the grinder a little bit, but then it'll be ready to go on. All right, that's a pretty good notch. Not perfect, but good enough for what we're doing. Let's test fit this thing. Okay, so the handle for the butt gate has to go right in here. And with our notch, it fits good. So, what we have to check is that when the handle is all the way down, that's as far down as it can go. And I don't like that because this handle is going to be in your way if you're trying to give a shot here in the neck. or It's just going to be in the way. We need to do something about that. And there's a simple solution. Enter the Harbor Freight Pipe Kinker. I, I mean Pipe Bender. <laughs> I'm just joking around because this thing has some major limitations and it's important to note this is not a tubing bender. There's a huge difference between a pipe bender and a tubing bender. This thing, like I said, has major limitations, but when you kind of know what those limitations are and you just have some gentle bends to make, it can actually work pretty well. So the first thing that we've got to do is figure out kind of where we want the center of our bend to be. So the way to do that is to stick this pipe up here and go down to where it hits the body squeeze. Now, if I had a third hand, this would be easy. So I'm going to make a mark on the tube right where the body squeeze hits it. So I've gone ahead and extended my mark all the way down to the side of the tube. And the reason for that is I also make a mark on the center of the die and the bender. Now, notice that that die says three quarters, and I told you before that we're bending an inch and a quarter too. There's a couple reasons for that. Number one, like I said before, these dies are for pipe, and pipe is measured differently than tube. The way they measure pipe is the inner diameter of the pipe. In other words, you would measure from inside this wall to inside this wall. That's how they measure pipe. To measure tube, they're measuring outer diameter. So when I say this is inch and a quarter tube, this is inch and a quarter from outside to outside. I have found that these pipe dies work a little bit better with tube when you use something that's just a little bit too small and that doesn't allow the wall to kind of crush and cave in. Um, so a three quarter pipe die is actually closer to like an inch to an inch and an eighth tube die, if that makes sense. It gets a little confusing. But, so that's why we're using three quarter. So let me show you, we'll do this bend and you be the judge if it works or not. So I wanna put my tube in here and align my marks. That's why we've got a mark on the die and a mark on the pipe. Then I know I'll have the bend in the right spot. So before you get too carried away pumping away on this bender, 
Make sure your notch is perpendicular to the die on the bender or else you'll have a crooked handle when you're done. See, it, it's really hard to tell on camera, but mine actually does need to be rotated a little bit. All right, we've got that tube perpendicular now and we've got our marks aligned. We're ready to start bending. So we're getting pretty close to the angle that I want. Um, it's important to note when I release pressure on the bender, there's a little bit of spring back. I think, I hope you can see that. So what we're gonna do is take this out and test fit it and see how it looks. Real quick though, before we test fit it, I mean, check out this bend. That actually turned out really nice. Um, it did not crush the tube. The only thing it did, you'll probably see it right there. There's a little indentation from the die, but for what we're doing, that's fine. I mean, I wouldn't want a bend tube for a roll cage <laughs> using this bender, but for a squeeze chute butt gate, it'll do the trick. Okay, so we've got our notch in place. Oh yeah, look at that. I think that's perfect right there. So we got plenty of clearance right here on the body squeeze and this handle is tucked down out of the way really nicely. I think we can go ahead and weld this up. So before I weld the handle on, and this probably goes without saying, but you know, we, we gotta say it anyway. We need to make sure that the arm that lifts the butt gate is in the proper position in relation to the position that we weld the handle on. Did I confuse you? All right, so the way this works, we've got this piece of round tube, and as you pull the handle down, this tube rotates. So we follow this tube back to this arm. So when I'm pulling the handle up and down, this arm, will be going back and forth like that. And what the arm does is this cable connects to the arm. So the arm pulls the cable, which in turn lifts up right here and it pulls these two doors apart. So I need to make sure that this arm is in the closed position when the handle is in the up position because we want to pull down on the handle to open the doors. Does that make sense? Okay, so I've got the butt gate in the closed position. This tube is also in the closed position, so I need my handle in the up position. Okay, I just wanted to get a couple quick little tacks on this handle so we can verify that everything is in place and working the way that we want it to work. So with the handle down, I've got plenty of clearance between the handle and the body squeeze and the handle's going straight down. It's not gonna be in my way if I'm trying to reach in here and do something. Down position looks good. So we can look at the other end of this tube to see where the up position would be and it'll be about right here. So that's perfect. There's no way I'm hitting my head on that. It's right in line with the body squeeze lever. I'm pretty happy with this. I think we can go ahead and weld it. All right, well, I think we're done with that. Let's see how it works. Well, my cable slipped a little bit on that last pull, but to be honest, it never worked that good before. Um, the way the old handle was set up, you could only get these doors about to there. So now we can get them open all the way. This thing's gonna work slick. All right, guys, well, that's gonna do it for today, but we've still got a lot of work to do on this thing. If you like this project, ring the bell and you won't miss any of the upcoming videos. Thanks for hanging out with me in the shop today, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.